So what's going on guys, Kade is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the top 10 best tips and tricks in Hogwarts Legacy. So at the start of the video I will show you how can you customize your wand because later in the game you won't be able to change it back. Then afterwards I will explain the hardest monster weaknesses. Then what are the best and most overpowered spells that you should want to use. And then lastly we will go over some hidden tips and tricks. So for example how can you utilize the room of requirement to become very powerful at the start. Or what are the best talents that you should start using as soon as possible and much more. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first step and I will show you how can you choose your own custom wand. So at the start of the game you will get bunch of selection screens and quests which will determine your unique wand, house and patronus. And the bad news is that when you make your choices you can't undo them past a certain point. So if you for sure want to get the most powerful and the best looking wand, house and patronus then you will want to click on this website called wizardingworld.com. This is one of the official websites of Hogwarts Legacy. So no matter when you're watching this video, before making your character just visit this website and make few email accounts and then register few accounts on this wizardingworld.com website. And making few email accounts will allow you to try the quiz and questionnaire multiple times. So then you can decide which wand, patronus and house you want to get. This website is a great way to try to customize your character and account. Because in the actual game you won't be able to change these things back unless you want to delete your character and then make a new one. So then moving over to the second tip and in this one we will look into the hat quiz, what it is meant for and how can you answer all the questions correctly. So like we know Hogwarts Legacy is an RPG but a lot of these things will include lore and story from the Harry Potter timeline itself even though we are playing few hundred years before Harry Potter is even born. But nonetheless, here I found a very detailed guide on the sorting hat quiz analysis. So if you are interested in what house you would be the best at, or perhaps you want to 100% guarantee the house that you want to be placed in, then here is the detailed reddit post that recapped all 28 possible questions and has sorted everything in 4 houses. This reddit post will not only help you with deciding the house but it will as well give you answers and more knowledge about Hogwarts Legacy. Because like we know if you choose Gryffindor then you will have to interact with the fat lady. Or if you go to the Ravenclaw then you will have to solve riddles to enter the towers and etc. This guide is all in one included quiz. You will get all the possibilities and answers for you already answered. And shown which answered will do what and much more. So if you want to dominate the hat quiz or if you are just interested in more Harry Potter lore to prepare yourself for all the questions in game then this is a great place to learn. So then moving over to the third tip and in my experience most players fight monsters wrong. So I will show you the hardest monsters and explain their strengths and weaknesses. So like in most games each monster and creature has its own strengths and weaknesses. And similarly in Hogwarts Legacy you should use the same 3 to 4 spells on every monster. Because each spell is different and is meant for different enemies. So that's why here I have ranked you the top 10 hardest monsters and how to fight them. So at number 1 we have the hardest enemies and then at number 10 we have the easiest. So dragons are at number 1. They will breathe fire and can damage multiple targets at once. But it will take time for them to charge their fire back. So then that is the time to attack. Then in number 2 we have the wizards which are the other students and other villains who the same as you will be able to use magic. So against wizards your best attack is to defend at the beginning of the fight and then release your main damage spells. Then at number 3 we have the Acromantula. These creatures will be huge spiders that will use darkness and shadows as their friend. So mainly on them you want to use your lightning spells or anything that can produce light. Then at number 4 we have the goblins and these creatures will be the main villains of this game story. They are small but will be able to use magic as well. So they are very similar to the human wizards. Then at number 5 we have the centaurs. These creatures are half human half horse so they will have incredible speed while also having the ability to use range and melee weapons. So against centaurs always stay on distance and never get too close to them. Then the next ones are the trolls. These are giant monsters that are very slow but have very good damage. Your main strength against them is to keep moving and never stay still for too long. Then in number 7 we have the inferi. These are one of the more common enemies that are undead corpses of fallen soldiers but their weakness is fire. So be sure to group them up and then use your fire spells. 
Then for one of the last ones we have the Graf Horns. These are aggressive magical beasts that have a pair of horns that can be used in certain potions. This creature you will only have to fight once and then afterwards you will be able to tame him. Then in number 9 we have the Magic Toad, which is a corrupted creature that will shoot slimes, which can even slow your movement so watch out. And then at number 10 we have the Whooper. While they look harmless when they first hatch, a Whooper song can actually drive the listener to insanity. So in open world we just want to stay away from them as far as we can. So then taking a closer look at the next one and here I will show you the best early game spells and how to use them to your best advantage. So the main goal for each wizard should always be at the start of the fight to immobilize the enemy and then use your main damage skills. If you are interested in each spell mechanic and what they are specifically good for, then I would recommend to watch my full dedicated Hogwarts Legacy spell guide. But for the rest of you, here are the top 8 best early game spells that you want to get. So the first spell in this tier list is the Avada Kedavra. Like from the game description and movies themselves, this is known as one of the most powerful spells and using the spell just once will instantly eliminate your enemy, so you will want to get it as soon as you can. Then the second spell is the Mysterious Magic. At the start of the story, only the protagonist will know how to cast it, so one of your quests will be to learn this skill. Then the third spell is the Crucio. This spell will inflict excruciating pain on its target, and this will be one of the most used spells for most players. Then the next one is the Pacificus Totalus, and this will petrify the enemy's body, making them weaker and giving you more damage. Then the fifth skill is called Incendio, and this spell will attack enemies with fire. And as well, we will be able to use talents to then upgrade this skill, to not only do more damage, but as well set the enemies on fire, so they would be taking fire damage constantly. Then the next skill is the Rictus Sampra. This one will make your enemies laugh uncontrollably. This skill won't do any damage, but it will be amazing to use to confuse the enemy and not to allow him to use spells for a short time. Then for one of the last ones we have the Stupefy spell. This might seem like a simple stun spell, but if you played other RPGs, stunning your enemy is an easy way to start the fight, to so then use your damage skills and then the enemy won't be able to escape. And then for the last and final spell we have the Protego. This is a defensive skill that will either way completely block the enemy attack or at least reduce his damage. So then moving over to the next one and here I will explain all four houses and what is the best one. Like I said at the start of the video, you can change your answer so make your choice carefully. And that's why here I have summarized all four houses and what each one will give you. So the first house is called Gryffindor. They are known for their courage under fire, unwavering bravery and stout-hearted chivalry. Students of Gryffindor are most likely to engage in heroics and may be safe bet for those wizards and witches willing to do the right thing no matter the cost. This house is designed with a lion and its colors are that of red and gold and students also will gain exclusive access to the Gryffindor common room which is located in one of the four towers and guarded by a portrait of a fat lady. And then lastly, if you choose this house, then you will get a student companion called Natasi One. Then moving over to the next house which is called Slytherin. This house is more known for cunning and ambition above all else. Students of Slytherin are often cast in a more devious light, as they're most often the ones who plan to succeed in their endeavors with little regard for morality or consequence to others. These students also have access to the Slytherin common room, which is located down in the dungeons. And the dungeons themselves are located under the large lake, casting an eerie glow from its windows. If you choose this house, then you will get a student companion called Sebastian Salo. Then for the next one we have the Ravenclaw. They're known for their wisdom, wit and creative intelligence for solving problems, and students of Ravenclaw are often assumed to be the smartest of their peers focusing less on raw power and more of the pursuit of academia. This house is represented by an eagle and heralds in a blue and bronze and students are often tasked with solving riddles to enter their common room and then they can enjoy its large vaulted room with wide open windows overlooking the grounds below. If you choose this house then you will get a student companion called Amit Dakar. And then for the last house we have the Hufflepuff. This house is known for being the most exclusive house to invite anyone who values hard work. The students of Hufflepuff House are generally thought as a good natured and pride themselves on patience, loyalty and fair play. This house is designed by a badger alongside colors of yellow and black 
Their common room is located somewhere near the basements of the castle and feature a homely and cozy room full of various wonderful plants and fauna and it is even located somewhere close to the kitchens. So if you choose this house then you will get a student companion called Puppy Sweating. So with that said, remember that being in a house is more than just a wearing a specific color. It actually changes the elements of your gameplay that will offer a unique experience like giving you access to different quests, companions and much more. So then moving over to the next one, in which this time I will show you how can you get your special wand. So if you click on this website called harrypottershop.com or .uk, then you will find a bunch of real life items and tools that you can buy. And interestingly enough, if you buy or have bought already a Harry Potter wand, then you can link your account in the wizardingworld.com website and import that IRL wand in Hogwarts Legacy game. So besides just choosing your wand from the quiz I gave you at the start of the video, a second more pay to win option is just to buy a real life wand. And this way you can get a special item that most players won't have and you can use it not only in real life but in game as well. And then on top of all of this, Hogwarts Legacy Twitter has confirmed that in special holidays and their events and live streams, they will be giving away these wands for free. So if you want to get a special wand, then don't forget to tune in into the official Hogwarts Legacy live streams and Twitter posts. So then moving over to the next step, and I've seen that most players use potions incorrectly or for wrong reasons. So right now I will explain all the potions and how to use them. As of right now, there are four types of potions. The first one is called Fortifying Potion. This potion will transform you into a stone-like version of yourself. Doing this will protect you against upcoming damage during battle. So I recommend to only use this potion in boss fights. Then the second one is called the Vingen Belt Potion. This is a simple healing potion that is used to heal your injuries over time. This potion you will get for free in quests and by picking up from the ground. So whenever you run into trouble or low HP, then just use it and your HP will be replenished. Then the next potion is called the Felix Felicis. This one is a pre-order exclusive bonus. So only the people who pre-order the game will be able to brew this potion. The Felix Felicis potion is used to make you extremely lucky for a period of time. So you only want to use this potion in hard quests or where you can't find an answer or way forwards. And then lastly we have the invisibility potion. This one is used to make you invisible for a short time. So you will be able to use it to faster complete quests or in a battle to protect yourself. So then while we are talking about potions, another mechanic that you can use in combat are plants. And yes, most people make the mistake of assuming that plants are only meant to brew potions or in their garden to grow. But no, that is wrong. You can use plants in combat and they are actually very OP. So for example we have the chomping cabbage. This is a powerful plant that instead of putting in potions, you will be able to carry in your bag and deploy it at any time to then make the plant attack your enemies and deal damage. And by the way, this plant is known for their sharp teeth so watch out. Then the next one is the venomous tentacula. You can use the leaves of this plant in potion making. But if you ever find yourself in trouble, then you can use the venomous tentacula spiked vines to attack your enemies as well. This plant is known to be highly venomous and it will attack its prey with creeping long spiked vines, so watch out. So like you can see, plants can be used in combat as well. And if you ever run into trouble or a hard monster fight, then bring out your plants and use them to quickly defeat your enemies. So then in one of the last steps, I will explain the whole talent system and I will show you where and how can you get and spend talent points. So besides just using your magic to cast powerful spells, you will have the access to a wide range of upgrades to your character in the form of talents and abilities. In this game there are over 50 different talents in total, divided into 5 different categories. To unlock a talent you will need to spend talent points, which you can get by leveling up and completing quests. These talents are excellent way to customize your gameplay and experience, as different talents will allow you to cast different types of magic. Moreover, these talents can be used to upgrade your spells, plants and potions to increase their power and much more. Like I said, completing challenges in the open world will give you experience, which then can be applied to upgrading your talents. As I will play the game more, I will start making build videos. So I recommend at the start to just level up your character and then be lookout for a build guide from me. So then you would know how and where to use your talent points, so you will get most out of your character and much more. 
So then moving over to the last and final tip and here I will cover the room of requirement and I will show you how can you become very strong by upgrading your skills and gear. And then we will look into why you should invest a lot of your time in this place and much more. So in the first hours of your game, at one point you will unlock the ability to use the room of requirements. And unlike in other games, this one place is basically your main base of operations, from which you can make potions, use talents, grow plants, then you can even use portals to enter the sanctuary, where you can make a house, hold different mounts and much more. So as you unlock the room of requirement, I strongly recommend to look through the whole place and try to get used to this place, because here will mostly all the character upgrading will happen. Sure, you will fight monsters and complete quests, but this is the main place where you will get stronger gear or where you will prepare yourself with different plants or potions to then bring them in the battle and much more. So if you want to be overpowered early in game, then complete all of the tutorials and side quests around the room of requirement and then start using it as much as you can, because this will be the place which will make your wizard stronger and stronger, and that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Hogwarts Legacy guides that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace.